Hi everyone, it is May 15, 2019, sex trafficking, child abuse, uh, CPS, Child Protective Services, stealing children out of loving, caring homes in this country. This problem has never been resolved. It has only gotten worse. And when it comes to abusing children, yeah, I have a real problem with that. So let me just preface at the start, I may curse in this video. Uh, I'm so unbelievably frustrated with never being able to resolve any problem that we have in this country, everything just getting worse. Well, that's a result of a lot of people just sticking their head in the sand, don't want to know it, just let me go on living my life the way it is. Oh, what a shame. Oh, how much I care about children. And then they just go on and do nothing. Well, that doesn't demonstrate care. All right. Well, we've had a major problem in our country. And it's only gotten worse. It's only gotten worse. When I think about how many children are being abused, even just as I speak, it makes me sick, and, but it really demonstrates the evil that exists and has existed in our country for a very, very long time. All right, let me just start this video with a few words from Nancy Schaefer. Well, my name is Nancy Schaefer, and uh, I'm from the state of Georgia in the United States. And um, thank you for your gracious invitation to join you tonight. And uh, thanks to all of you who have made this incredible World Congress of Families number five in Amsterdam possible. It's a privilege for me to join you tonight and uh, to be with you in some pro-family uh, policy here. Uh, I will share with you on the unlimited power of Child Protective Services. I served in the Georgia State Senate, and after four years of viewing the ruthless and unsparing actions of Child Protective Services, also called CPS, which I will use tonight, I wrote a scathing report entitled, The Corrupt Business of Child Protective Services. <laughs> Thank you. The report cost me my Senate seat. Here's some copies of the report, if you'd like to get one. However, there are causes worth losing over. And this is one. I'm going to uh, uh, talk about some of the problems and then some realistic, maybe, solutions uh, for families and children and uh, maybe look to some steps that we can take. This is not to say that there are not those children in wretched situations who need to be removed. There are, and we all agree. But tonight, I'm talking about those children removed from their homes intentionally for profit. Children are seized unnecessarily from their families due to the federal aid created in 1974 entitled the Adoption and Safe Families Act. It offers financial incentives to the states that increase adoption numbers. To receive the adoption incentives or bonuses, local CPS must have more children. They must have more merchandise to sell. Funding is available when a child is placed in a foster home with strangers or placed in a mental health facility and medicated, usually against the parent's wishes. Parents are victimized by the system that makes a profit for holding children longer and bonuses for not retur returning children to their parents. This is abuse of power. It is lack 
of accountability. And it is a growing criminal political phenomenon spreading around the globe. And it has only gotten worse. Nancy Schaefer, every time I hear this woman speak right from the outset, I want to burst into tears. She and her husband were murdered because of what Nancy Schaefer was exposing. The corruption, the horrific corruption of child protective services. Okay. I just came across this. Proposed new bill would double federal funding for foster care. More opportunities for child sex trafficking. Attorney Mike Dolce, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, who represents children in foster care, has referred to U.S. foster care as a system set up to sex traffic American children at the taxpayer's expense. And this new proposed bill will double the amount of children stolen and trafficked and abused. Okay, now I will link below to that report that Nancy Schaefer lost her Senate seat over, The Corrupt Business of Child Protective Services. It's heart-wrenching. It's 11 pages. You know, I, I've been bookmarking articles, and there, <laughs> wow, are there so many articles here. John Whitehead, a constitutional attorney, not a crazy conspiracy theorist. Uh, the essence of evil, sex with children, has become big business in America. April 23rd, 2019, and we've got these Trump supporters who believe that Trump is putting an end to human trafficking, sex trafficking of children. It's only gotten worse. Children, young girls, some as young as nine years old, are being bought and sold for sex in America. The average age for a young woman being sold for sex is now 13 years old. This is America's dirty little secret. The fastest growing business in organized crime and the second most lucrative commodity traded illegally after drugs and guns. As investigative journalist Amy Fine Collins notes, it's become more lucrative and much safer to sell malleable teens than drugs or guns. A pound of her heroin or an AK-47 can be re retailed once, but a young girl can be sold 10 or 15 times a day, and a righteous pimp confiscates 100% of her earnings. Every two minutes, a child is exploited in the sex industry. Adults purchase children for sex at least two two and a half million times a year in the United States. Who buys a child for sex? Otherwise ordinary men from all walks of life. They could be your co-worker, doctor, pastor, or spouse. In Georgia alone, it is estimated that 7,200 men, half of them in their 30s, seek to purchase sex with adolescent girls each month, averaging roughly 300 a day. On average, a child may be raped by 6,000 men during a five-year period of servitude. It is estimated that at least 100,000 children, girls and boys, are bought and sold for sex in the U.S. every year, with as many as 300,000 children in danger of being trafficked, trafficked each year. Some of these children are forcefully abducted, others are runaways, and still others are sold into the system by relatives and acquaintances. CPS is largely involved in this human trafficking, the commercial sexual exploitation of American children and women. 
via the internet, strip clubs, escort services, or street prostitution is on its way to becoming one of the worst crimes in the United States. This is an industry that revolves around cheap sex on the fly with young girls and women who are sold to 50 men each day for $25 a piece while their handlers make 150, 200,000 per child, per child each year. And this is not a problem found in big cities only. It's happening everywhere, right under our noses in suburbs, cities, towns across the nation. Girls aren't volunteering to be sex slaves. They're being lured, forced, trafficked into, into this industry. In most cases, they have no choice in order to avoid detection in some cases, aided and abetted by the police. Highly mobile enterprise with trafficked, traffic, trafficked girls, boys, and women constantly being moved from city to city, state to state, country to country. The Baltimore, Washington area, referred to as the circuit, with its I-95 corridor dotted with rest stops, bus stations, truck stops, it's the hub for the sex trade, raking in upwards of $9.5 billion a year in the U.S. alone. Every year, the girls being bought and sold get younger and younger, 8, 9, 10 years old. Where does this appetite for young girls come from? Look around you. Young girls have been sexualized for years now in music videos, on billboards, in television ads, and in clothing stores. Marketers have <laughs> created a demand for young flesh and a ready supply of over-sexualized children. All it takes is one look at MySpace photos of teens to see examples. If they aren't imitating porn, they've actually seen they're imitating the porn-inspired images and poses they've absorbed elsewhere. Yes. Yes. Well, propped up are images of sex everywhere. Uh, and that's what we value. So, of course, young girls are imitating it all. Oh, I'll be valued. I'll be popular. It's horrifying to see what we have become. Latex, corsets, stripper heels, once the fashion of porn stars have made their way into middle and high school, the pornification of a generation, absolutely. But uh, that, that was part of the demoralization process that was deliberate. And I posted a video just recently of the ex KGB, um, Yuri Brnezhov, I can't remember his last name, but he talked about how the Soviets were using demoralization, one, one um, aspect of psychological warfare against Americans. It has been incredibly successful because Americans love to just stick their head in the sand and live a delusion. When you do that and don't face reality, don't face the truth of what is taking place, it only leads to a very dark, very sick, twisted society, which is what we are living right now. And my God, adults really need to start changing their ways. Ah, but, yeah, I can dream all I want. Whether we welcome it or not, television brings it into our living rooms and the web brings it into our bedrooms. The culture is grooming these young people to be preyed upon by sexual predators and then we wonder why our young women are being preyed on. 
and trafficked and abused. Finding girls is easy for pimps. They look on MySpace, Facebook, and other social networks. They and their assistants cruise malls, high schools, and middle schools. They pick them up at bus stops. Foster homes and youth shelters have become prime targets. Uh, many start out as runaways or throwaways, only to be snatched up by pimps or larger sex rings. Others, persuaded to meet up with a stranger after interacting online through one of the many social networking sites, find themselves quickly initiated into the new lives, into their new lives of as, as sex slaves. Debbie, a straight-A student who belonged to a close-knit Air Force family living in Phoenix, Arizona, is an example of this trading of flesh. Debbie was 15 when she was snatched from her driveway by an acquaintance friend. Forced into a car, Debbie was bound and taken to an unknown, unknown location, held at gunpoint and raped by multiple men. She was then crammed into a small dog kennel and forced to eat dog biscuits. Debbie's captors advised or advertised her services on Craigslist. Those who responded were often married with children and the money that Debbie earned for sex was given to her kidnappers. The gang raping continued. After searching the apartment where Debbie was held captive, police finally found Debbie stuffed in a drawer under a bed. Her harrowing, her harrowing ordeal lasted 40 days. Debbie was fortunate enough to be rescued, others not so lucky. According to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, nearly 800,000 children go missing every year. That's 2,185 children a day. Yeah, it's a nightmare from beginning to end. Those being sold for sex have an average life expectancy of seven years, and those years are a living hell. Nightmare of endless rape, forced drugging, humiliation, degradation, threats, disease, pregnancies, abortions, miscarriages, torture, pain, and always the constant fear of being killed or worse, having those you love hurt or killed. Andrea told me that she and the other children she was held with were frequently beaten to keep them off balance and obedient. This was an investigation of the sex trade, an article written in the New York Times, The Girls Next Door. Sometimes they were videotaped while being forced to have sex with adults or one another. Often, she said, she was asked to play roles, the therapist patient or the obedient daughter, her cell of sex traffickers, offered three age ranges of sex partners, tod toddler to age four, five to twelve, and teens, as well as what she called a damage group. In the damage group, they can hit you or do anything they want to you through sex. Uh, those sex always hurts when you are little, so it's always violent. Everything was much more painful once you were placed in the damage group. What Andrea described next shows just how depraved some portions of American society have become. They get you hungry than to train you to have oral sex. They put honey on a man. For the littlest kids, you had to learn how not to gag. And they would push things in you so you would open up better. She learned responses, like if they wanted us to be sultry or sexy or scared. Most of them wanted you scared. When I got older, I'd teach the younger kids just how to float away so things didn't hurt. How to disintegrate. How to leave your body. 
dissociation, the splitting of the mind. When it comes to sex, the appetites of many Americans have now changed. What was once considered abnormal, abnormal is now the norm. We've become desensitized by the soft stuff. So now we need a harder and harder hit, forced to go without sleep or food until they have met their sex quota of at least 40 men. One woman recounts how her trafficker made her lie face down on the floor when she was pregnant and then literally jumped on her back, forcing her to miscarry. Holly Austin Smith was abducted when she was 14 years old, raped, then forced to prostitute herself. Her pimp, when brought to trial, was only made to serve one year in prison. Barbara Amaya was repeatedly sold by traffickers, abused, shot, stabbed, raped, kidnapped, trafficked, beat, beaten, and jailed all be before she was 18 years old. I had a quota that I was supposed to fill every night, and if I didn't have that amount of money, I would get beat, thrown down the stairs. He beat me once with wire coat hangers, the kind you hang up clothes. He straightened it out, and my whole back was bleeding. In Oakland Park, an industrial Fort Lauderdale suburb, federal agents in 2011 encountered a brothel operated by a married couple, the Boom Boom Room, it was known as. Customers paid a fee and were given a condom and a timer and left alone with one of the brothel's eight teenagers children as young as 13. And a 16-year-old foster child testified that he acted as security when, while a 17-year-old girl told a federal judge she was forced to have sex with as many as 20 men a night. One particular sex trafficking ring catered specifically to migrant workers employed seasonally on farms throughout the southeastern states, especially the Carolinas, Carolinas and Georgia, although it's a flourishing business in every state in the country. Traffickers transport the women from farm to farm, where migrant workers would line up outside the shacks, as many as 30 at a time, to have sex with them before they were transported to yet another farm where the process would begin all over again. This growing evil, growing evil, is for all intents and purposes out in the open now. And yeah, educate yourself. Uh, find out what's happening in your communities. Stop feeding the monster. Sex trafficking is part of a larger continuum in America that runs the gamut from homelessness, poverty, and self-esteem issues to sexually sexualized television, the glorification of a pimp, the hoe culture, what is often referred to as the pornification of America. A billion dollar sex and industry built on the back of pornography, music, entertainment, this epidemic is largely one of our own making, especially in a corporate age where the value placed on human life takes a back seat to profit. When you value only money, material success, this is what happens. It is estimated that the porn industry brings in more money than Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Apple, Yahoo. Call on your city councils, elected officials, police departments to make battle against sex trafficking a top priority. Well, many within that category of people are involved. Stop prosecuting adults for victimless crimes such as growing lettuce in their front yard and focus on putting away the pimps and buyers who victimize these young women. That so many women and children continue to be victimized 
brutalized and treated like human cargo is due to three things. One, a consumer demand that is increasingly lucrative for everyone involved except the victims. Two, a level of corruption so invasive on both a local and international scale that there is little hope of working through established channels for change. And three, an eerie silence from individuals who fail to speak out against such atrocities. But the truth is that we are all guilty of contributing to this human suffering. The traffickers are guilty, the consumers are guilty, the corrupt law enforcement officials are guilty, the women's groups who do nothing are guilty, the foreign peacekeepers and aid workers who contribute to the demand for sex slaves are guilty. Most of all, every individual who does not raise a hue and cry over the atrocities being committed against women and children in almost every nation around the globe, including the United States, is guilty. We're all guilty. I have lived my entire adult life being shut up every time I brought up the issue of child abuse, sexual abuse, silenced. We socially engineer one another. Oh, that's too uncomfortable. I don't want to hear it. Oh, well, you're just a victim. Get over it. The, the silence has brought us right here with more and more children being so unbelievably tortured, their lives destroyed. Is Child Protective Services kidnapping and trafficking children? Yes. Here's the ugly truth. Most Americans who are victims of sex trafficking come from our nation's own foster care system. It's a deeply broken system that leaves thousands vulnerable to pimps as children and grooms them for the illegal sex trade as young adults. Most people don't know about our nation's foster care. It's a sex trafficking pipeline, but the facts are sobering. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children found that of the more than 18,500 endangered runaways reported to um, the National Center, in 2016, one in six were likely victims of child sex trafficking. Of those, 86% were, were in the care of social services when they went missing. In 2013, FBI 70 city nation raid, 60% of the victims came from foster care or group homes. In 2014, New York authorities estimated that 85% of SAC, uh, Sex trafficking victims were previously in the child welfare system. 2012, Connecticut police rescued 88 children from sex trafficking. 86 were from the child welfare system. And even more alarming, the FDA, uh, sorry, the FBI discovered in a 2014 nationwide raid that many foster children rescued from sex traffickers, including children as young as 11, were never reported missing by child welfare authorities. In Kansas, the number of missing foster children prompted a class action suit. The class action suit was filed in federal court against Governor Jeff Collier and Gina Meyer Hummel, Secretary of State's child welfare system, along with officials of two other agencies claiming children in the Kansas foster care system have been treated so poorly that they've suffered mentally or fled from foster homes. In some cases, they have been trafficked for sex, sexually abused inside adoptive homes, or in one instance, reportedly raped inside a child welfare office. Kansas authorities have only been able to recover 18 of 81 missing children in the foster system. Interestingly, the effort to find the missing children did not get started until after the lawsuit was filed, and all 50 states 
have similar problems. And now deceased Georgia Senator Nancy Schaefer wrote extensively on the CPS abuse and corruption and fought hard while she was alive to bring awareness to the sex trafficking happening through corrupt government institutions. Schaefer was a leading voice against CPS and discovered many abuses until she was murdered in what authorities say was a murder-suicide committed by her husband. Well, family and friends said her husband was devoted to Nancy. Loved her. The news covered, uh, coverage of her death never even mentioned her life's work which was exposing the financial corruption of the state child welfare system that takes children away from imperfect and often poor but loving homes in exchange for federal dollars. And this article goes on. Yes, the Department of uh, Child Protective Services, known as the Department of Family and Children's Services in Georgia and other titles in other states, has become a protected empire built on taking children and separating families. This is not to say that there are not those children who do not need to be removed, yes. But we're talking about the countless children who do not need to be removed, and they are being removed, and it has only increased, and you can do a search on YouTube and find out how many children are being yanked from healthy environments, familial environments, with loving, caring parents. CPS is a for-profit business that depends on the removal of children in order to get paid. The Adoption and Safe Families Act, set in motion by President Bill Clinton, offered cash bonuses. Now, this might be a um, what's the word I'm thinking of? An extension of the Adoption and Safe Families Act that was passed in the 70s. Bill Clinton, amendments to it. Well, we all know the Clintons are part of the sex trafficking. But set in motion by Pres President Bill Clinton offered cash bonuses to the states for every child they adopted out of foster care. It's a for-profit business. The more children they snatch out of homes, the more money they get. In order to receive the adoption incentive bonuses, local child protective services need more children. They must have merchandise that sell and you must have plenty of them so the buyer can choose some counties are known to give a 4,000 bonus for each child adopted and an additional 2,000 for a special needs child. Employees work to keep the federal dollars flowing. The funding continues as long as the child is out of the home. When a child in foster care is placed with a new family, then adoption bonus funds are available. When a child is placed in a mental health facility and is on 16 drugs per day, like two children of a, well, constituent of mine, Nancy Schaefer's, more funds are involved. There are no financial resources, no real drive to unite a family and help keep them together. That's why when you have these state agencies under the umbrella of Child Protective Services. That's why they don't want the children placed with other family members. They want them placed in group homes, foster care, because they're cash cows. They go to a family member. Uh, they're more likely to be uh, reunited with their parents. How people can be involved in this is beyond comprehension. I, adults harming children. Okay, well, we know there's a lot of them out there. I, I, 
What better way for child predators to find a pool of children to prey on? CPS, foster children, considered at high risk for abuse. Meanwhile, biological parents are gagged by illegal court orders for talking to the press about having their children unfairly removed from them and put into a system set up to abuse them. Gagged. Thousands of parents report the illegal gag orders imposed upon them by judges who claim to want privacy for the child. Um, they're silencing the free speech of parents and taking away a method for those parents to get those children back. Now, there are so many videos on whistleblowers, CPS whistleblowers, and this is a very good video, who, um, Buzzsaw, Sean Stone interviews Tammy Stefano, the executive director of the National Safe Child Coalition. She has a YouTube channel. She has a lot of parents and former uh, CPS workers, social workers, who have come out and confirmed all of this. They don't protect children. Hundreds of children are murdered in CPS care. Foster children bring great profits to states. LA CPS turning foster children over to known sex abuse offenders. CPS putting children into sex trafficking is a huge problem, to say the least. Here is the interview. And you know what, guys? I am a family member was trading a child for rent. Familial sex trafficking, a problem in the upstate of South Carolina. Okay? Uh, it does not matter. You can call yourself anything, Christian, Jew, Muslim. Uh, you can be homosexual or heterosexual. You can be married or not married. It's irrelevant. It means nothing. It's just a label that people slap on themselves to parade themselves out into the world. Hey, I'm such a good person. Then behind the closed doors. See, that's when you get to know people. When you're behind the closed door with them. A family member was trading a child for rent. Familial sex trafficking. A 26-year-old could not remember a time where sexual abuse didn't exist in her life. I knew that I felt violated. I knew that my body felt violated, but I just didn't know how or what it meant or why it was happening to me. Okay, well, this was a woman who, at 12 years old, she was raped, and at 14, she had been sold for sex by her older cousin. He was her trafficker. She said she still trusted him because he was family, these are the people that are supposed to take care of you. These are the people who are supposed to protect you and know the most and are closest with you, so you already have that bond. It's common in South Carolina. 2016 familial trafficking was the most common form of relationship between the trafficker and a victim in the state. Family members are trading children. Family members are trading children. The devil you know, South Carolina residents are selling family members into the sex trade. A Richland County woman told her 13-year-old sister and her friend they were attending a birthday party one Saturday night in 2016. Instead, the woman lured the teenage girls into a trap. Do you see how unbelievably messed up Americans are. 
And this is just a, to listen to what happened to this 13 year old. She was taken into a room. The woman delivered her sister and friend to Quincy Bryan Bright in North Columbia. He told the girls he had invited men over to have sex with him. The men were paying customers. Girls were separated. The 15 year old friend was taken to a room with a man she had never seen before. He raped her, but it wasn't over. She was taken to another room. Second man raped her. She was taken to another room. A third man forced her to perform a sex act. And overnight, she was a sex slave. South Carolina is grappling with one of the most horrendous crimes imaginable, familial trafficking. And, you know, I could play this video all I will. I will. It's switch, switch each day, day dedicated, dedicated to helping the survivors of human trafficking, people, people who have been made to work or provide sex by use of force, force fraud, fraud, or coercion. These are people's daughters and um, wives and mothers and granddaughters. Um, you can't, you can't ignore, ignore that. that. Switch, Switch is a community, community nonprofit which, which works closely with law enforcement to help victims, victims of human sex trafficking. And law enforcement. <laughs> Predator cops guilty of sex crimes against women and children. They're a menace to society. What is the Trump administration doing about the fact that adults purchase children for sex at least two and a half million times a year in suburb cities, suburb cities, towns across the nation. I'll tell you what the government is doing, little to nothing, because law enforcement is involved, federal agencies are involved, judges are involved, teachers are involved, so it's only grown worse. It's grown so much worse. Here's another interview. California attorney Sean McMillan on why he fights CPS. They're stealing kids. You know, a lot of people believe that life is fair and that everybody has equal opportunity that is only true for the well-adjusted to a deeply disturbed society. You know, that bell curve where the majority are coming from dysfunctional homes, but not the kind of dysfunction that exists for millions and millions of children. And that dysfunction outside that bell curve. That's the dysfunction that you can't talk about because the majority silence you. And if they even say, okay, it exists, it only exists for you know a few. No, no. Millions and millions of children if they make it out alive uh, from the abuse that they sustain, either from the foster care system or from their own parents, they become adults that fully recognize that life is not fair and that there is no equal opportunity because you end up as a young adult with so many issues that prevent you from having that quote-unquote normal life. And I am sick of the silencing because this is life for everyone, not just the majority in our society, for everyone.
and everyone has a right to speak their experience and not to be then shut up, silenced, re-victimized, degraded, told there's something wrong with you. I am so sick of it. Adults are causing a whole lot of this nightmare that we are living in. You know, still I get comments underneath the video that I, that I recently posted. Americans are not to blame. I'm sick of you saying that. You know what? I am sick of your blind your blindsidedness, your delusion. Americans are good. No, they're not. On the whole, they are not. We have so many sick and twisted people out there. Oh, but they are materially successful and oh, they're teachers and they're uh, in the mental health field or Oh, they're social workers. Yes, you care so much about children. Wow, you're fabulous. All right. I will link below to it all. No, Trump is not doing anything to stop this. In fact, everything is getting worse. Everything has gotten worse in the two years that he has been in office. So I don't even want to hear from the Trumpets. Done with you. Done with you. I'm sorry. It's it's just too much. You know, I don't know. We can never get anywhere. We will never ever get anywhere. You know that make America great again? It starts with the children. You start there. Make America Great Again means restoring the physical, the mental, the spiritual health of its people. If you're not doing that, you're not focused on that, you are not making America great again ever again. And it was never great, but you focus on the children. You protect the children. How do you protect children when you have a country that is flooded with sick, abusive, deranged adults? And I have to tell you, I am sick of people not caring about these children. I am I am so sick of him. I, I, wow. All links are below.